Alrighty, so um, this is uh, very much in line with what we've been chatting about. You're going to continue to see the word ecosystems. What we're going to start doing now, though, is putting some names uh, on those ecosystems. All right. Um, not just talking about me talking about squirrels and forests, but we're going to get a little more specific than that. I'm going to introduce a new word, a biome. Probably heard about it heard this word before. Um, a biome is a large, distinct terrestrial region um, that has similar soils, climates, plants, animals, uh, regardless where it occurs in the world. So just like you would use the word forest to talk about a stand of trees um, here in New York State or in Washington State or in China or in um, Switzerland or wherever, okay, um, a forest always means certain things in your mind. All right, that, that's the idea by, behind biome here. All right, we'll learn that there's more than one kind of forest is, is what it boils down to. But So when you get into biomes, you're getting uh, more specific. Some are rather unique, and they might only be in one or two places in the world. Some are a lot more generic. Uh, one of the things I didn't know when I put this lecture together, however many years ago it was, was that biomes really only refer to terrestrial environments, not aquatic. Okay, Because um, we're going to basically do this same thing with water after we're done with this. So um, they just don't use the word biome. I, I don't know why. Because life still lives there. Bio is, is life, right? Uh, we still have animal life. We'll still have plant life there. So, at any rate, um, there's nine major biomes uh, identified on Earth. So, uh, we've got to go through a couple of these words, just as a refresher. Um, you know what soil is, probably plants and animals as well. Uh, but we're going to talk just uh, briefly to remind you, if you don't know, uh, what climate is. Climate is more than the weather. Weather is day-to-day, uh, -day, if you would, okay? Um, it's an average over, I, I want to say, I don't know if I have another slide coming up for it. I made it too small to read. It's like 30 years that they look at for a climate. Um, so if you find some old person talking about how things were when they grew up, oh, it's different now, we used to have eight feet of snow. Da, 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 da. Well, if it's been more than 30 years, yeah, things could actually change. What it isn't is looking back a year or two, saying, ah, oh, this damn climate change two years ago, or even you guys. When I was a kid, that's a little too soon. you got to remember how old the Earth is, okay? Uh, again, not really something we talk about this class, but the Earth's been here four and a half billion years, all right? She works in her own time frame, and then some. So what seems like a lifetime, literally to us, is is nothing um, compared to some of the systems that the planet runs. Um, so 30 years on climate is actually a blink of an eye, not even a blink of an eye for, for the Earth. Uh, but it, it has the uh, usual stuff in it. Um, we want to think about precipitation. All right, and we want to think about temperature. Pretty much everyone's familiar with the relationship between latitude and, and temperature. Uh, someone want to remind us what it is? Yeah. So lower the latitude or close to zero means that the hotter it is, and then the higher it is, you get farther away from the sun. Okay. So. Farther you go towards either poles, it cools off. The far the closer you get to the equator, it warms up. And you've known that one forever. All right. This other one you've known as well, but you don't always think about it. Um, you can be dang near the equator, but if you go up high enough, you're going to find snow. 
You're going to be in Hawaii and look up on a mountain. It's high enough and see snow. So that's what elevation is doing there. All right. Um, so that's something to think about when we do talk about some of these colder biomes. Um, that they might be, you know, independent of latitude. So, um, just a little more specifics here. Uh, biome is the next level of organization up from uh, ecosystem. All right. Um, it's bigger is what I mean here. This is a bigger folder. Uh, communities are very specific. Ecosystems, remember, involve multiple communities. And what we're getting here is that biomes could have multiple ecosystems. And um, I, I will be the first to admit that even though I know I shouldn't, I often use these words interchangeably. Um, and, and, and I don't say who doesn't, not like you guys go tossing these words around every day, but, um, you know, in everyday common conversation, you use either one, someone's going to know what you're talking about, but we do understand they, they are more specific. So biomes are broader. And again, there's nine of them that we're going to talk about. Too small to read, and you'll see another list, don't worry. You've heard of some of these. Tundra. That is the purplish blue. And you see it uh, way up north, but it also, uh, unless they've used similar colors, I always love when they use like half a shade off on these kind of maps. Um, but I do think I see the tundra color one or two other places. Uh, boreal forest. Some people say boreal. Temperate deciduous forest. Temperate rain forest. We're going to talk about both of those. And they do not give this color white. You're not miss seeing that from back in the room there. Um, it's just they grouped them together. We break them out, if I remember correctly. Temperate glassland, grassland. Chaparral, chaparral. Desert, dry shrubby. Tropical rainforest, tropical dry forest. I don't think we talk about tropical dry forests. Um, savanna, heard that one perhaps. And mountains with complex zonation. I don't think we mentioned that one either. We hit on the big ones, though. Okay. So what did I keep? Tropical rain, temperate grassland, temperate rain, boreal, chaparral, desert, savanna, tundra, temperate deciduous, and three, five, nine. Yeah, so I must have made my list off of nine. And there's too small for me to read on that previous page. Probably up around 10 or 12. We did, like I said, we got rid of a couple. Um, don't necessarily want to copy this entire list down right now. You're gonna, we're going to talk through each of these. So... Or is anybody like two thirds of the way through and you want me to stop? Awesome. Anybody even taking notes out there? There's one or two of you. So a little bit more about temperature and precipitation. They're not always equal. You'll see these triangle diagrams. Science loves triangle diagrams. Um, I'm not sure, for all I know, business or economics uses them as well. <clears throat> but it's a nice way to compare three different things. All right? Uh, and, and, and science hates pie graphs, pie charts. So, um, and this doesn't necessarily lend itself there. So, what we've got at the top here is tundra, then we move down to boreal. Then you've got your forest uh, to grassland kind of stuff here. Uh, temperate deciduous forest, temperate grassland, chaparral, uh, temperate desert, 
And then at the very bottom, got tropical rainforest, dry tropical forest, savanna. Oh, that's where dry tropical forest would go. Okay, makes sense. Moist tropical desert, seems oxymoronic there, and dry tropical desert. So how are these things all split up? Well, let's look at the left side of the triangle first. Left side, if you hadn't noticed already, is temperature. Um, familiar colors for you here. Red is hot, blue is cold. So as we go up towards the top of the triangle, it gets colder. We go down towards the bottom, it gets warmer. The bottom of the triangle, the base of the triangle, uh, is all about precipitation. To the left is more, to the right is less. So you see why we have tropical rainforest in the bottom left-hand corner. Hot as it can get and as wet as it can get. And you move outward from there. If you think about moving up the, the left side of the triangle and across the bottom side of the triangle, you're slowly getting cooler and decreasing temperature at the same time. Uh, decreasing moisture at the same time. So temperate grassland is essentially in the middle, for lack of a better word. All right, and the last leg of that triangle there is latitude. Bottom right is your tropics. That's very close to the equator, if you don't know where the tropics are. Actually, the tropics run 23 and a half north latitude to 23 and a half south latitude. You may have heard of Capricorn and Cancer there from the two tropics. Um, so, that's there all the way, so you got about 47 degrees worth of uh, uh, latitude that encompasses the, uh, the tropics there. Pretty good area, really. Pretty good amount of space. Anyhow, moving up. So we're moving towards either pole, okay? Um, I know it's very tempting because we're going up. I think this just refers to the North Pole. Works for going down to the South Pole as well. Um, so things can change then based on, based on latitude. So it's kind of a really handy diagram. Not really going to ask you to uh, interpret this ever. Okay. Um, my work, my use of the word more important here. Maybe not the best choice of words. Uh, more dominant, more prominent, I think is what I meant. So Arctic, we're really talking about, you know, how, how dang cold it is. But everywhere else, those other two lines, it's, it's more about how much moisture uh, you're getting. I picked this picture of the tundra because it's exactly what you weren't expecting to see. You were looking for ice and snow and horrible wind blowing something or another, right? They do have summer. It's not very long, but they do have summer. And it can be quite pretty. Let's go back a step. And you guys tell me temperature and moisture. Can we read the chart from out there? It's in the middle. How does that work out for, for moisture? Yeah, so having it in the middle here kind of does put it down the middle. Okay. Um, but it's definitely at the end of um, two spectrums, right? The uh, temperature. And the, and the latitude. But so there is moisture, obviously, to make the snow you're used to seeing, but then also to um, support some veg vegetation, you know, when the opportunity arrives, and then as such, some, some animal life as well. So just some little 
information here for you. So we do not have tundra at the South Pole. But certainly could argue that we have what we would stereotype tundra as being, you're thinking of Antarctica, and you're like, it totally is right. But again, it, it doesn't fit environmentally. Treeless is important to point out because you're like I just I just showed you this beautiful you know picture with all kind of obviously vegetation but there's not a tree in the picture. All right, there's not enough moisture. Trees take a lot of water, a lot of water. So there's not enough <laughs> moisture. There's not a long enough growing period. Okay, um, to support trees. I'm not going to ask you to memorize, I don't think, um, the, the, the precipitations, but I want you to keep an eye on them as we go through, kind of keep them in mind, okay? Uh, it's not quizzable, but it's interesting to see the change as we move through. So I told you they have summer, um, growing season, well, we'll call that spring, summer, fall, all right? Um, you look at that 160, you know, that's, that's practically almost half a year. You got 365, right? Um, but um, if you look at, you know, what should be spring, summer, fall, or what is a more, in quotes, normal spring, summer, fall, um, it is a lot, it is a lot longer. It's up to upwards of two thirds as opposed to barely uh, half. 365, so what 180 something would be? Yeah, would be a half a year. So, so permafrost, remember, is a portion of the ground that's always frozen. Um, really hard for plants to do much of anything in that, of course. Uh, there's not a whole lot of material growing there, so the soils don't tend to ever really get too nutrient rich. Um, we haven't really talked about soils in here, but you understand uh, from you know whether you or your, your, your folks, your grandparents, somebody as certainly you've watched them pot a plant or go to the store and get new soil and then so on and so forth. You know they're not just using the dirt out in the parking lot because there's nothing good in it, right? You gotta have those nutrients, you gotta have, uh, in some cases, very certain kinds of soil. Well, we're talking about the nutrients right now. So um, if there's not a lot there in the first place, it's really hard when it dies and goes back into the earth, um, you know, for there to be that much more next time around. So not, not the best. Uh, source of uh, food there. Remember species richness, okay? Um, in other words, there's not a whole lot of critters or plants uh, that could survive up there. And uh, those that uh, do, you know, they're, they're pretty, uh, we don't want to use the word extremophile on them. They're not living inside a volcanic uh, vent or anything like hardy. that. That's the word Gardner would use, cold hardy. Cold hardy, that is very good for, for Probably veg vegetation and the critters, right? Um, so with a few examples, you see uh, a few exceptions. You see we're talking about uh, uh, mammals here who are able to regulate their body temperatures. We do have an owl in there, but uh, mostly small mammals. And slightly larger mammals would be a, what, what, what the heck a muskox is doing on that list. I don't know, but they must again have sufficient, you know, 
food to eat, so. Moss is lichen and grass. Check to see caribou, reindeer in there too, but a little further south. Santa Claus gets some things and checks to see, so they get them to go eat them. Some lichen. For real. Boreal, for real. I say for real. Most of the cool environmental scientists say Boreal, though. But it looks like something you might have around these parts, right? However, it's not. We're north, but we are that north. There's north, as some of you do know. And there's north than your camps. Or Canada. A little north of um, Just south of the tundra. Oh, that's where we are. All right. Forests of pine, spruce, and fir, which apparently are fairly drought resistant. We've got them all across the northern continents. There's no land in this zone in the southern hemisphere. So, um, again, we don't have a southern hemisphere component. Slightly better growing season. Anybody write down the precip for uh, tundra? It's like 20-something, wasn't it? Tundra 25. Yeah, so we've doubled it. And that's why you can have trees. Not the only reason, but it's the main, you know, good reason. Soils aren't much better. But pine trees are pretty hardy things. And about 10% of the earth is covered with this. So, doesn't sound like a whole lot, but... A good chunk. good chunk, especially for being only in one hemisphere. Less permafrost because you're further south and it's deeper. So again, the tree roots can go in a decent amount. Uh, there's still a lot of water there from the Ice Age. Um, you're thinking yeah, that was a long time ago. Around here, the glaciers retreated about 12,000 years ago, which again isn't that long. Um, but the further north you go, obviously the more recent it is. I don't know exact numbers up there, um, but glaciers retreat fairly slowly. So, you know, you're going back maybe, I don't even want to go on record as guessing, but, you know, five, six, seven thousand years ago, maybe. Yes, ma'am. Interesting. And I know we were talking about like forests as a they they refer to it as like a giant ecosystem, essentially. They can be all the same, even though it's like Okay. Because I I didn't actually know that this was sort of a bio. I termed it as like a single forest. Okay. Um I mean, I could weave a scenario where that could be a reality. I don't know that about it. Um, you know, depending on how... Well, no, there were glaciers there. I was going to say, you know, if you want to use plate tectonics, you could obviously weave the, the continents back together to have... And again, I come from rocks, so we often talk about rocks spanning continents. You put South America and Africa back together, the rocks match up. That's how one of the ways we know plate tectonics works, for example. Could you do that with forest? In theory, but the the continents split up. The last big split was like 65 million years ago. 
Yeah. Um, and again, the, and, and there's been glaciers coming through doing the snowplow thing in between as well. So uh, I'm not saying they're wrong. I don't know under what criteria they're they're saying that they're related though. Is it like on Discovery or something? Or? Something fairly legit, though. Yeah, one of the ones that did okay. that. Okay. Oh, well, he usually knows what he's talking about. So. Yeah. Um, he gets good script writers at any rate. Um, yeah. So it might just be something, but like you know the way they talk about uh, root systems, you know, because again you got oceans in between. But I know they talk about um, a lot of uh, uh, funguses and 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 certainly certain uh, types of trees that all communicate through uh, root systems and whatnot, but. Um, but yeah, I, I haven't heard it in that terms though. I might have also been misunderstood. I don't. Th I doubt it. I doubt it. It's, I I don't. Uh, I don't know everything about this stuff. So, but um, but so we've got ponds and lakes left over. So again, plenty of water. You're not necessarily even relying on that precipitation that we just doubled. Okay. Um, anywho, here's here's your reindeer. finally the caribou, wolves, bear, moose, and squirrel. Um, rabbits, sable mink. This is your sort of uh, going back in your history class to the, the fur trapping days and and all that stuff in the wild northwest. All right, this is where they were tromping around. Um, and uh, you know where the frost giants were and whatnot. So, but uh, this is an area that TV likes to show. A lot. It would be nice, and I apologize. This is an afterthought to have uh, perhaps some enlargements of that map after each slide to say, "Oh, hey, by the way, here's where we're talking about." Instead of just saying, "You know, below the tundra." Temperate rainforest. Temperate rain. Very lush, very pretty, right? You're used to hearing about tropical rainforest. This is temperate rainforest. What's the difference between temperate and tropical? Temperate has less precipitation. That, and what else? Somebody else. Yeah, I was going to go with temperature, but yeah, latitude is, is definitely different as well. All right. We don't have the heat associated with the tropical rainforest. Primarily because we're not at the, the latitude for it. We've got these in America for sure. So coniferous, again, that's your pine trees, conifers, in case you don't know that. They have pine cones, that's where coniferous comes from, conifers. Cool weather, dense fog, high precipitation. What does that sound like in the U.S. of A.? Here? Here, yeah, I hear you, but almost, huh? What did you say? Yeah, this is Seattle and, and whatnot. All right, Washington State, um, Northern California, um, Pacific Northwest, as they say. Oh, and it's right there. Also found in. S comma S. So I'm guessing that's Southern South America and Southeastern Australia. But we all know and love this again as, as uh, Washington State. Or Bigfoot territory for some of you guys. But yeah, I hear you about here. Sometimes we seem to have so much rain. And Lord knows we've got pine trees. But we have other kinds of trees, much more so. We've almost tripled our precip now. They get a large chunk of it in the winter time. Um, I'm not going to say they don't get snow. They get snow, but not, not again, not like we do. Not like, uh, 
it just doesn't get quite cold enough. Unless, again, you go up high. But um, it doesn't ever get too hot, though, either. It's fairly temperate. Hmm. Good use of the word. Anybody have a pine tree in their backyard? Nearby? Yeah. You have to rake up the leaves? Pine cones everywhere. How about the needles, though? Oh, they're everywhere. Yeah. Do they dissolve? Does it seem like they ever break down? God, no. So, this is why, you know, I was just struggling for a reason to explain to you guys why the soil's still kind of crappy. Pine needles, bless their heart, they are some of the most hardiest vegetative material on the planet. Um, they're there, they're mixed in with the dirt, okay? And uh, you soak them enough, uh, sure, you could probably get some tannins and, and whatnot out of them. But uh, living, having a pine tree in my backyard for the last 20 years, um, those needles just stay there. Do you have to get the pine needles before they go and they're super the dirty to make the tea out of them? Huh, I've not tried pine needle tea. Is it good? I haven't tried it either. I just know that you do it. Yeah, I wouldn't necessarily try that. I'm not sure that's... Did you see that on Discovery Channel? No. Did you read it on Reddit? I've had it somewhere else. All right. All right. Yeah. Something in the back of my head says pine tree, not good to eat or drink. But you never know. You never know. I used to um, make tea out of steamed nettles. You mean nettles? Yeah, that's what I've heard of. That's, it's herbs that's, yeah. It's steamed and nettles. Okay. Maybe you break down. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you're getting into earth. Those, those flowering plants. That's a little, a little different, but but it could be. You could apply that. Also made maple leaf tea once. It was funny, but it was really really gross. <laughs> we're making our own tea. I have a transported for Daniel. At one point, we had six at least six types of mint growing next to our house. One of them catnip, one of them somehow chocolate mint. I, that was definitely, definitely had to be man-made. But um, our grapevines overtook and we lost all all the mints at one. I don't know why. Things that grow delicious things that grapevines are. Yeah, yeah. We're going to miss the grapevines. But mint we can grow again. Square stems on mint, if I remember correctly. I had a plant class once. I think that's how you identify a true mint, other than smell. It should always have a square stem, I think. So, anywho, little plant facts there for the rest of y'all. Um, don't go making tea out of just random crap, though, okay? Don't, let's be careful about that. Um, so, uh, we're looking at large evergreen trees, old growth forests. Uh, where are we? Oh, we talk about temperate rainforest. So, um, variety of cool climate animal life. That's vague. Um, the farther you come uh, out of the extreme zones, you're going to see way more, not just plants, but animals. Okay? Um, for lack of a better word, again, normalizing. Um, you know, just to, to familiar sort of environments. See, I go using that word there. Um, critters. Okay, vegetable tasting, the whole thing. And yes, we log the hell out of this. Um, a lot of it is um, second generation, if not third generation. I spent some time driving around in northern Michigan a long time ago. And um, trees are very tall, but they're not, uh, not horribly thick. And, and they're not, uh, you know, they, they're, they're new, they're young. So just because something's tall doesn't mean it's, it's very old. Told you guys sort of off topic, but you do have some old growth uh, here in New York State. Not that actually too far. If you go up, uh, my knowledge of road numbers is horrible. But if you go up like you're going to Old Forge and sort of go east 
out towards Lake Placid. There's a stand right out there um, by the place called the Wild Center. Definitely cool. And you will feel the difference. You'll notice the difference in the trees. It, it does look, it just looks older. Oh, that's weird. So temperate deciduous. This is us. This is us. So 75 to 150 centimeters a year in precip. You got seasons, hot summers, cold winters, again, normal in quotes. Some states are definitely rainier than others. Um, again, a lot of that is, is latitude. And I don't remember noticing it so much in Ohio, um, but definitely since we've been in New York State, you know, even the difference of going from here to Albany or here down to Binghamton, um, when you're talking about eh, another month or so, right around now in the year, and, um, you know, they, they get spring-ish a bit earlier than us. Um, we're fairly far north. Again, it's something I checked out when I moved here. Um, you guys maybe growing up here never pondered it, but what do you think of when you think of Green Bay, Wisconsin? Well, weather-wise, but yes, cheese, good cheese. Yeah, we're that far north. So... Yes, ma'am. Um, it's all right. Nothing I say is either. I moved here from the sanctuary downstate, which isn't far. But when you lift it up, it's like an average of 10 degrees colder mm -hmm. here with like a foot more snow. Yeah, something. So there, there's not far at all. What, if I may, where, where at? Um, Kingston, Pennsylvania. Okay. Yeah. And no. I, there's lake effect. <sighs> From what I can tell, lake effect, that Tug Hill eats up all the lake effect. Um, there's something south going on here, and, and again, I'm not sure. We're in a valley, so you, you've got some complicated meteorology going on from that alone. But Probably not, but um, it could pick up some, you know, it could be why North Utica gets uh, different weather than us. Hell, I've noticed coming from here to New Hartford, and you guys maybe even noticed coming from here to wherever you live. You know, the it'll be raining here, snowing there, or more so snowing here, but raining there, and, and just different things. Um, there's certainly, a, you know, some interesting weather phenomena going on around here. But, so temperate deciduous, that's where we live, okay? Try to remember that one. Broadleaf trees that lose their leaves. That's what we're going for deciduous, in case you're wondering what deciduous means. All right. Um, oak, maple, beech, and such. The critters are getting bigger because there's more food for them, both vegetation to support the lower end of the food web, uh, and then subsequently the higher end can get supported more. Uh, but even you have, you know, your vegetarians, deer certainly aren't carnivore, let alone omnivore. Um, so, you know, they need uh, different plant material than, say, your, uh, your smaller herbivores are eating. Again, this is new growth. Uh, we cut everything down. We grew a whole bunch of food on it. And farmers abandoning, that's not quite the right word. Sometimes they don't have a choice, but, um, you know, letting their farms grow in is not a new thing. All right. Definitely not a new thing. And it does not take long for Mother Nature to, to grow back in. Doesn't take long at all. My wife calls them volunteers, but every so often you'll find in your yard, you know, just a, a tree growing there that wasn't there, you know, a month ago. 
Um, those seeds will float in the wind, land anywhere, and if it's wet enough and sunny enough, it'll grow a tree. So farmland goes back over real quickly. And one tree makes five trees, and five trees make 50 trees, and so on and so forth. Home on the range, grasslands. Pretty, huh? All these pictures seem to be purple and orange based. I don't think I did that on purpose, though. Hot summers, cold winters, too little precipitation to support trees. I don't know if you have a stereotype of uh, Kansas or Nebraska weather in your head, but this is that. All right, and then some cowboys. I'm going to throw cowboys into the picture, go a little further out west, riding around. Tall grass prairies with short grass prairies, that's just vegetation type. Um, nothing really to worry about. Again, we're starting to come back down with the uh, precip. Now, some of you, uh, you, I think you mentioned the uh, the lake effect. Yeah, I, this is definitely not lake effect. Um, almost the opposite of it. As you get inland on continents, okay, you find yourself um, starting to dry out because you're that much further away from large bodies of water for the most part. Okay. Uh, coasts obviously are going to have the most, and in, in, inland from there, uh, but then it starts to starts to dry up. So, um, weather is is very complicated stuff. Very very complicated stuff. There's hardly ever just one or two reasons, let alone three or four. Um, but this is something we could kind of say as a generic rule. All right, when you get into these centers of these these continents. Um, not a whole lot of precip. So the majority of this original grasslands uh, was lost to farming. But again, as I just argued, uh, it won't take long for Mother Nature to, to reclaim it. Originally covered with bison. Well, that's not even originally. Um, we managed it to kill off the bison. But, again, just from my field, I can tell you guys that, um, you know, there were wild horses and zebras and giraffes and all that stuff. You go back far enough, okay, living in this part of the U.S. Um, they always say horses were introduced to the U.S. much, much later. But originally, you know, before humans were mucking about, uh, too much at any rate. Uh, we, we definitely had native populations. They came across the, the land bridge over the Bering Straits there. Um, all kinds of critters uh, lived out there. And we know that because we've got the, the fossils of them. I actually studied zebras uh, of Nebraska. So, um, you know, we had quite what you would call exotic wildlife there. But originally, that's talking about, you know, since we were there doing our stuff. This last bullet's kind of interesting. And something that's actually been in the news and, and unfortunately politi politicized lately um, is fires. You hear more about forest fires than you don't hear grassland fires too much. But it's, it's the same idea. Um, this, these are caused by lightning, okay? Uh, we're going again way back before you've got people with abandoned campfires and whatnot. And um, it's, it's easy to talk about the earth like she does stuff on purpose, Mother Nature, especially when you give it a, per, a persona, Mother Nature. You know, she takes care of her planet, I almost said that. She does it. There's no thought going on there, okay? But... When you have these periodic 
fires that, that just burn everything to the ground. Um, it tends to keep things in check in forests and grasslands. Heck, there's even some pine cones out there that will only open up to let their seeds out when they've been in a forest fire. That's pretty convenient. Um, but that's the only way to get the dang things open is this extreme heat. So um, just, just some neat stuff. And, and like I said, when you, when you hear about forest fires, mainly the problem is because we've been mucking about um, for the last hundred years or so and potentially trying to control things um, that we shouldn't. When we were in uh, California last summer, they uh, had some huge forest fires the summer before. It's devastating. I'd never seen, you know, I'd seen a house burn down here or there, or maybe a little field fire or something like that. But to see just chunks of forest, I've got pictures somewhere. I should get those out one of these days. Um, and especially, when, you know, when you look at these sequoias that had been there forever. And uh, it's pretty wild. Uh, you had a question, um, comment, yeah, something? Yeah, just I like the idea of the comment. Um, I live in Trenton, and there's someone who has a bird license. So, hmm. or, or Santa, like, I think of them as, like, such a, um, you know, animal of the past. And then I moved up here, and there's just someone has, like, I don't know, 25 parcels. Long long Selling them for steak and burger. I think they're just, I mean, I see them, maybe they're little babies. Oh. Okay. Well, unfortunately, they all look alike. You might not be noticing. Well, yeah. fortunately, they all look alike, and you might not be noticing if you know one of them disappears. But um, you, you get that a lot around here. Uh, they, I don't know that they use the fur for wool. You know, they could be combing them for. I don't think I've ever bought a buffalo sweater or buffalo gloves. So it's probably meat, unfortunately. But you'll see a lot of those uh, exotic, so to speak. Uh, farming around here. Um, there's alpacas. There's uh, there's even ostriches somewhere. Anybody know where the ostriches are? There's an ostrich farm or two around here, I think. Um, but uh, but yeah, yeah, the buffalo. You'll see them here and there. You see them here and there. Maybe not in Poughkeepsie, but it's a lot. Of, there's a lot of land up here. It's a lot of land. And again, people have given up in many cases on growing stuff on it, so they're looking for other uses. So herding animals is, is a good one. And it's a niche market too, so. Chaparral. Chaparral. Mediterranean climate, but also in California. Um, again, they have winter, but it's not super cold. Uh, the summers are baking hot. Um, kind of a decent amount of moisture. It must be on the next slide. So we'll, I'll hold off my comment on that for a moment. Uh, frequent fires, because again, everything is, is so damn dry in the summer. Oh, mild, moist winters. There's my comment for... You can see grapes a lot come out of these climates. So you got to have grapes or another thing that need a lot of uh, precipitation. And that's again why you see them along the, the lakes, Great Lakes and even down the Finger Lakes, um, because at least localized, you pick up the, to borrow the lake effect word there, um, not just in the winter, though, but summer as well. Um, and also, your bodies of water keep you warmer longer into fall. All right. Uh, they also, unfortunately, keep you cooler longer in the summer, uh, depending on how, how hot or cold they are. But um, but living near large bodies of water does does change things a lot. So this is shrubby land. Chaparral, shrub. Okay, they kind of start to say, so if you, especially if you pronounce it sh. Uh, chaparral, this is shrubs. Um, lots of birds. 
you've seen deer in your yard, more than likely they're eating the fresh little buds off your some of your trees, but more than likely your shrubs, deer slug shrubs. Chipmunks are just making a go of it in the little world underneath the shrubs, as are many other small furry mammals, I'm sure. But but yeah, in the growing season, it's just there's a lot of lot of moisture. That was a short for chaparral there. I don't have anything about grapes, but almost almost positive in the recesses of my brain. That's where we're in Southern California is known for its grapes as well. So yeah, that's well that one I knew. Yeah. So, but I, I would have thought I would have mentioned that again. Desert. I picked a picture that you wouldn't potentially normally think. Yeah, there's a cactus in there, but there's more vegetation out there than just cacti. And having been in a couple deserts, we apparently went to the wrong ones because I didn't see hardly any cactuses. I was really ticked about that. One or two, but we just didn't go to the right places. But when there's a stand of vegetation, boy, they make the most of it. They really do. Um, there's some some beautiful stuff out there in the deserts. Certainly the main reason for that is lack of precipitation, exactly what you think of uh, for a desert. Less than 25 centimeters a year for precip. So we're back to tundra. And in fact, um, some people have, have called uh, tundras frozen deserts. But I think even those, those uh, tundra seem to have more vegetation when it has a chance to grow. You don't see a whole lot of big critters there. Yes, mammals are great at homeothermy, all right, regulating their own temperature, self-regulation. But the bigger you are, the harder that is, okay? Um, the smaller you are, the easier it is, but it's, it's also easy to go overboard in, in either direction really easy to get too cold too quick and it's really easy to overheat real quick when you're small. That's one thing that the larger animals do have going for them. They're, they're able to maintain, but um, the deserts, I, have any of you ever spent any time in a, in a desert? Um, we're at, no time. Where's that? I, I, I can barely hear you, I apologize. Aruba. Okay. There's a desert in Aruba? I would not have thought that. Cool. Well, hold on, hold on, hold on. So, um, inland? Okay. Okay. Uh, were you out, out at night or just during the day there? Okay. okay. Uh, what I was going to get at, well, I got a couple more hands came up. Um, the temperature extremes are ridiculous in deserts. Um, you could be 110, 120 during the day and say 60 at night, but that 60 is going to feel like 20 or 30 because you had a 60 degree drop and it kind of under file under everything that's relative. Um, it's just amazing because again, no moisture, no clouds, nothing to keep the, the heat in. Um, so when they talk about temperature regulation, the first thing you think about is, is yeah, these guys got to get used to not roasting. But also, they got to make it through the, the nights. Um, I think I saw a hand up over here first. Yeah. What would Colorado be considered? It depends where you are. Southern Colorado does have some desert area out there for sure. Um, where I went, so we told me that, like, is that considered desert? Yeah. I believe one. Yeah. No, no, there it is. Uh, around the, the Four Corners area, um, I actually spent some time in Southern Colorado. That was probably the first desert I was in. I think Utah was probably the first first desert I was in, like two deserts. But yeah, it's questionable out there. I think they might 
a little too much moisture to be like legit desert, but a lot of sand rocks and nothing else, yeah. But the rest of Colorado, not at all like that, so. Yes, ma'am, over here. Um, I've been to Israel a couple times, and it's pretty desert. Shirt and shorts yeah, yeah, it's it's insane the extremes um, that that they can have. So it's it's a tough environment. It's a real tough environment. And you know, like I said, it, it, again in Hollywood and movies, we always see the the person you know sunstroke and, and moisture. Um, but you got you got to get through those nights too. And what a unique experience, by the way. All right, how many more slides do I have? I'm getting my battery signal here. Uh, too much for this. All right, let's do Savannah, and then we will get paused before I lose all this recording. Probably can't look at this and, and not think of, like, uh, well, you guys are too old, so you're too young for Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. Um, you can probably see, what, Lion King here? Yeah. yeah. I don't know what else. Um, huh? Madagascar. Madagascar. <laughs> Wrong continent, but yeah, maybe. Uh, the second one was North Africa. Oh, well, I'm sorry. There we go. Uh, yeah, I, I did see those, but um, I was much more a fan of uh, it was the offshoot of that penguins from Madagascar. Uh -huh. My kids dug that a lot. I enjoyed it. Especially that one penguin that ate everything. Um, but, uh, so I grew up with a guy named Marlon Perkins, Mutual of Omaha, which is an insurance company. Every Sunday they put out a show called Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom with Marlon Perkins. And this is the original one where they, they, I see memes about it now where they send like this guy to go, okay, Jim, you go look at the bear. I'm going to stay here with the camera, you know. Um, they, he every Sunday, and he went to a lot of places like this, and you know you you see the, the this running down the vat and eating it, and and so on and so forth. Um, but uh, you've got a couple things that that separate the savanna um, from, say, our grasslands. Okay, this is not we don't have savanna here in America. Um, Temperature hardly ever varies. Okay, it's always warm. Um, what does vary is the rain and the rainy season, which again you all probably know about. Um, and it basically it has to rain enough um, when it does come to not just support all that vegetation, but to leave enough lakes and ponds um, full. For the organisms, the animals. Because again, you do have a food chain out there, um, but whether you're an herbivore or a carnivore, you still got to drink water. Um, and again, we've all seen, and thanks to Hollywood, for once they did something good for us, um, you know, that there are times of the year when that gets really scarce. And everybody has to go to the water hole, like it or not. I was told I've been mispronouncing. How do you guys say that tree? That's what I say. I, I thought it was a, 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 a kai now or something like that. I always, I've always said acacia, but it's like a popular uh, oil or something now or seeds. I forget. It shows up here and there. Some of that crunchy, nutty stuff. I've always said, all right, maybe not then. Maybe the person that was chastising me was wrong for once. Probably my son. Um, so uh, those are those cool trees. And again, you've, you've seen them in, in ton pictures on TV. Uh, you've got your grazers, okay, the hooped animals um, all over the place right? because there's tons of grass to eat. And because they're there, we're able to support the large predators all right, and scavengers. That's where your hyenas fit into there. All right, 
So we're going to stop short of the tropical rainforest here. Um, that'll leave us a little bit to do uh, next time. And then we'll move into uh, 6.2.